In our everyday life, we are constantly exposed to the action of other people. Surprisingly, by just observing them, we have an intuition of what the other person is doing and even why. Despite the action might last a couple of seconds at best, we are amazingly sensitive to the details of how other people move. When you see Rito and Abdel lifting these boxes, the kinematics of their action, such as the speed and the amplitude of their movements, will reveal which of the two boxes is the lighter one and how much effort each of them has to apply. We're used to ascribe such higher perceptual abilities to the cortex. Bold fMRI reveals a circuit composed of premotor, somatosensory and parietal regions in particular to be reliably activated by the observation of other people's actions. These regions are also activated when we ourselves perform an action, suggesting we understand what other people do and why, partly from the reactivation of the motor program we would use to act. As action observation is considered to be a cognitive phenomena, the cerebellum was often discarded as non-interesting brain regions. On the other hand, it's regularly investigated in action execution where it is thought to be important in coordinating our own actions. In the current study, we investigate whether the cerebellum is important while we observe others' actions and whether its activity is necessary. Across four fMRI experiments, we replicate the cerebellar lobules 6, 8A, and 7B that are reliably activated by the observation of other people's actions. Does this mean that the cerebellum is really important for perceiving others? Unfortunately, with fMRI alone, we cannot answer this question. So in collaboration with the Erasmus MC in Rotterdam, together with Robin Bruce and Samuel Picard, we reported patients that suffer from spinal cerebellar ataxia 6, a disease that affects the cerebellum. We showed the patients two clips of a hand lifting a black box, and they had to judge which box was heavier. As you can see from the violin plots, in average the patients, in red, were worse in solving the task than the control group, in green. Patients found it hard to transform small differences in how the hand moved into a perception of effort and weight. And patients with more severe ataxia performed worse in the task than those with less severe symptoms, as shown by the correlation between the SARA scores and task performance. To identify whether the problem came from an inability to process the kinematic or the shape information, such as seeing the muscles contracting, in the movies we compared a condition in which the arm was covered, or sleeve condition, with one in which the arm was exposed, or no sleeve condition. We found that patients were impaired in the coverage condition, lower average in red, showing that they had impairments in kinematic processes. When we exposed the arm, both the patients and the controls improved the performance by the same amount. We saw that in the shift in average for both the green and red plot when comparing the sleeve to the no sleeve condition. And when we compared the amount of improvement, we saw that there was no difference in the performance gain. Our cerebellum is thus smarter than we gave it credit for. Of course, this does not mean that the cerebellum alone perceives other people. If you remove the chain of your bicycle, it will no longer move forward. But that doesn't mean that it was the chain alone that drove the bike. What it does show is that the cerebellum is a critical part of a system, a part we had neglected for too long. Well, the important part of this study is not only that this really shows uh, one of the best pieces of evidence for uh, the role of the cerebellum in uh, cognitive processing, but it also shows the clinical relevance. It means basically that neurologists and psychiatrists from now on, they really also have to take these kind of cognitive symptoms into account.